Hello everyone, Ladislas Maurice from TheWanderingInvestor.com. So this evening we're going to go to a little house here in Medellin, meet up with Mauricio who helps people make investments in Medellin. And we're going to have a look at the house and then do all of the calculations to see the exact net rental yields that one can obtain after all the deductions, etc. So unfortunately, we have to do this in the evening because that house was not, uh, the owners couldn't show it during the day. Medellin is, yeah, not the safest place, uh, but around here in Laureles, it's relatively okay. It's a very residential area. So there are two main areas where, that are investable in Medellin. One is El Poblado, which is the main touristic area and local people with money like to live and it's there are a lot of restaurants quite a few hills apartments with amazing views etc and then there is laureles which which is a little farther away which comes at a 20 to 30 percent discount uh, but which is very pleasant as well a lot of cool restaurants right there in that direction behind me uh, there is an area with approximately 50 restaurants they're all pretty cool, really nice designs. There's an area with a lot of bars and nightclubs close to the university. So it's a fun area and it's flat, so it's very walkable. So a lot of digital nomads, when they come for a second time to Medellin, like to stay in Laureles because it is more walkable and it's a little bit more local than the, the whole El Poblado area. But both areas honestly are, are really cool from a lifestyle point of view and offer very decent investment prospects. Before coming to Medellin, I had very modest expectations of the city because it's been so well marketed. Same thing for the, the, actual, the real estate market here, uh, but I've been actually really impressed. The, the city is, is cool and real estate is very affordable and the yields, if you target the midterm market, so rentals from one month to a year targeting specifically Americans, the, the yields are extremely attractive. Millions of Americans in the last year or so have realized that they can work entirely remotely. And the same people increasingly believe that the situation in America is quite toxic. Uh, so they're happy to leave. And Colombia as well as Mexico offer a great lifestyle, great weather, it's very affordable and it's the same time zone. So the rental market right now in Medellin is super, super hot. All the agents I am talking to have occupancy rates of 85, 90, 95 percent even. It's, uh, it's quite incredible actually. So we're going to go check out a little house. It's not necessarily the nicest of houses, but I just thought that it looked like very good value for money. It's going for about $100,000, 94 square meters, three bedrooms in Laureles. I mean, just look here, it's cute. So you have like tons of cute little restaurants around. You know, you just go into one. It's like very affordable. terms of menus so you can see in terms of salads here you get good salads for what for seven dollars so here you can have steak barbecue like large pizza for ten dollars um, in one of the better areas and it's definitely not going to be small little parks you know this is just like an average area in in Medellin Some foreign dude with a cute girl. It's it's very green. That's what I like about this area. It's very, very green. Great, so I just got here. I'm in front of the house. So we're gonna do a little walkthrough really quickly and then we'll sit down with Mauricio, who is my Swedish Colombian agent here, and we'll go through the numbers because it's quite interesting. A little residential streets. So really we're in Laureles 
five minutes away from the really the core of Laureles, so good location, not core core, but still a very good location. And it's this little house. So there are two separate title deeds, one for the the apartment that we're gonna go see and for the one up there. So that's another family that's living there. But essentially the way things are structured is that you really own the property and you can decide whatever you want to do with it. So Airbnb is a possibility. So this is typic really not the typical viewing, house viewing of Medellin that, that you see on YouTube. Typically on YouTube, people will show you amazing apartments with stunning views, etc., of which there are many. I agree, there's some amazing real estate in Medellin. But here I just wanted to show it an easy, small, affordable yield play. A bit of a no-brainer investment. So we've got one bedroom here. There was the entrance. So this is a three-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment. A second bedroom, sort of a living space. So we're not talking luxury here, obviously, um, but this house, 94 square meters, is going for less than $100,000. It's going for $97,000 before negotiations. Look, there are a few things that I'd work on, obviously improve the, some of the finishings, uh, but it wouldn't be very expensive. The door was a bit weak at the entrance, other bathroom here. So, I mean, that's been, you know, it's decent. and the kitchen which is still under renovation but you know pretty decent great mauricio thank you hey, very much for your thanks time today for having me so this like i said when i was showing the apartment it's really not the typical place that you'll see on youtube when people show you medellin but what i thought that's interesting about this and then when we're looking for investments we're sitting together in front of his laptop and i was saying show me some some easy just entry point just no brainer investment and then you pointed out this house and i think it's it's very interesting it's in many ways local yeah um but you believe that we could rent such a house if furnished properly to foreigners yeah for sure and the first uh, reason would be the location the location is amazing it's here in laureles just like i think one, two blocks away from where they really like Laureles, the second park are. And there you can find all the par all the restaurants, all the bars, nice hotels. And the, the vibe is really, really nice. And then just coming up two blocks up, and then you found this authentic Colombian neighborhood where you have like like small little city houses and you have like Colombians walking around. And it's, it feels very like you're not like in Europe or in the US, you're definitely like in a South American little city. And still with all the all the cool amenities. Yeah, with all the pluses. And then you also have like, close here you have the Exeter, which is like a big supermarket. And when it comes to investing in Medellin, it's, it's crucial to invest in either El Poblado or here in Laureles. This is where all foreigners essentially want to stay. So you definitely don't want to, to go out of that. Let's talk numbers. So 94 square meters, three bedroom, two bathroom, it's going for 380 million pesos, which is approximately $97,000 at the yeah. current exchange rate. You were saying to furnish this place really well, how much would you need to invest? Uh, you would need about 20 to 25 million. And like 25 million is, that's def definitely covering everything that you can. And nice little decorations. Yeah, nice decoration, thing. like good, uh, nice paintings and uh, like quality furniture. Okay. Because like, f Life uh, cost of living here in Colombia is probably like 30% less than if you go to the US or to Europe. Okay. So it's Perfect. like you get a long way with just 25 million A long way. Great. So taking the initial purchase price and adding the amounts for closing costs and for furniture, we're at about 410 million pesos, which is roughly 106,000 USD. Yeah, correct. How much typically? So, I mean, you're originally from, from Sweden. Sweden, yeah. People don't negotiate that much in Sweden. How's the negotiating culture here? Like, how much could you 
generally expect to negotiate when you when you try to buy a property here yeah that's a good question like the average is a six to eight percent six but to eight yeah. percent but it's a lot of deals where the buyers the, the seller sorry the seller comes out and asking like 20 30 percent more than they're willing to sell it for so what you do then it's like you you lowball and then you see what's happening you wait some time you make sure that the seller knows that you have a different like other objects uh, that you're looking at at the same time and then you can see but normally 20 to 30 it's not very unusual to but negotiate 20 to 30 or you mean to throw a low ball low ball offer under 20 to 30 percent and then you see the reaction from this from the seller okay and if they are like yeah. but generally in the end sellers accept what sort of I discounts? think what we have seen in uh, is six to eight percent it's okay. very normal because a lot like of markets if you throw 30 percent below the asking price no people don't they will even look at you yeah, yeah. for example in Sweden yeah. where I come from there's like you 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 set up a price and then they always bid all, like it's a bidding war to get the house. It normally goes for like one week, two weeks, and if it's longer than one month, then it's too long. Cool. While here in Colombia, the average uh, price a house can be on the market is like 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it's a low liquidity yeah. market. So this is really, really important to understand. I would not come to Colombia to buy, to renovate, and then to flip. The, the turnaround time is just too slow. And then from a tax point of view, it's a mess as well. So here you come to buy either for lifestyle, for a mix of lifestyle and investment, which a lot of people yeah. are doing nowadays, or just purely for investment. Is the negotiation mar margin smaller on kind of more affordable units like this than luxury apartments? Yes, always. I okay. would say almost always. Okay. Like this, this unit here is like a Colombian family has owned it before. They are wanting to sell it because they're to the countryside. So they're like looking to sell. And then I think it could be pretty fair deal. Because we were, we were discussing before this video, essentially in a, a house like this, if you put it unfurnished, rent it to locals, you would get roughly 5% gross. But again, what you want to capture is the whole digital nomad um, boom that's happening here in, in Medellin. Yeah, and the most important way you do that is always like location, location, as you said before. You want to be either in Poblado or Laureles in order to do that. And Laurel is here, as yeah, you can't see much now in the video, but it's very walkable. Yeah. Like it's super flat, it's in the center, like Medellin is in, in a valley, and Laurel is like in a flat area in the middle. So it's very walkable, you can walk everywhere, but then you don't get the views. So it's like, it's uh, take, give and a take, I would cool. say. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're at 410 for the total purchase without negotiating. So we're, we're going for conservative numbers. How much do you think you can rent this on a monthly basis? So people who come here for one month to six months. Yeah, without uh, uh, without promising too much, I'm very very certain that you can rent it for one k. So one thousand USD. USD. Yeah, USD so a month. So four million. Yeah, four million roughly. Okay, so let's run with an occupancy rate of about eighty eighty yeah. percent. I was looking at a software a bit uh, earlier today, just looking through the Airbnb listings that you have, the long term listings and your occupancy rate was between 85 and 90%. Yeah, it's crazy. So we're just gonna use 80%. So that takes us to 38 million pesos per year in gross income. Yeah. Your management fee for long-term is 10%. 10%. Okay, so we take that out. Uh, what's the property tax? The property tax here is extremely low. It's $100 a year. <laughs> $100 of property yeah. tax a year. And this is why, look. But I need, to, I need to add, it's very unusual. And it's yeah. also because it's, it's a house. If you buy an apartment, it's, it's always more expensive. Yeah. So that's also why it's a really good investment because it's, the expenses for this house is very low. And it's, it's a bit of an American market in many ways in the sense that all these modern buildings have relatively high HOA fees. But when you buy into this, you do not have any HOA fee. So not only is your property tax a lot lower, but there isn't any HOA fees. So even if suddenly a lot of supply were to come on the market and you need to, you need it to, to kind of fight on a price basis versus the competitors. And honestly, I'm not seeing a lot of supply coming up. There isn't that much building happening. When I speak to people, they say, oh, there's a lot of building. I travel full time around the world. For a city of 2.5 million people that's actually pretty dynamic i'm really not seeing that many buildings popping up 
so I, I don't see supply being an issue for, for in the immediate future. So just the fact that it's a low fixed cost uh, maintenance investment is, is really interesting. How much would the landlord have to pay approximately for utilities like internet? So utility for this area, it's, it would be around 250 mil a month. Okay, so about three million a year. Yeah. So like seven hundred and fifty dollars a year of utilities. Yes. Internet, roughly how much? Internet is uh, one hundred and fifty-two a mil pesos a month. Okay. And then you get one hundred and twenty megabyte. So again, if you target the foreigners who come here for a few months, you cannot be a cheapskate when it comes to the internet connection. Just oh, yeah. take the best because. That's the one thing that'll kill your reviews, really. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. slow internet. I couldn't upload my, my video work. That's the first p people ask is like, how, how stable is the internet? And a lot of time they even want to have a print screen from the internet inside the house. So make sure to have that. I should actually ask for this as I travel <laughs> now because sometimes I make that mistake. No, it's good, it's good. Because imagine you get to, you're working and you make good money. That's why you can live here and like it's, it's good for being here. And then you can't work. Yeah. then everything is getting destroyed so it's super important perfect so internet so that is approximately another 1.8 million a year. out a year yeah maintenance how much would it cost just to maintain the place when i don't know there's a leak somewhere there's on a yearly basis how much would you tell the investor to just kind of set aside for their numbers i would say about 1k 1k okay. a year so 1K. 250 mil roughly a month okay just to set aside and so you be on the good there okay cool but that sounds fair yeah but like this here it's newly renovated i think it's it, w it would be very lower in the beginning of the yeah and i think in the the furniture budget that you had was quite big yeah so in there i'd probably take a bit of that furniture budget to do to work on some of the finishing during the time so we did the numbers right before essentially once you remove all of those expenses so one we were conservative with the purchase price we were conservative yeah with without negotiation without negotiations we were conservative with the occupancy rate of 80 percent mm -hmm. we were conservative by putting in uh, maintenance and maintenance allowance etc so once we remove all of the expenses we get to a net yield before local personal income tax of 6.2 percent honestly i travel around the world full time looking for investment opportunities it is very hard to find such net net yields another comparable market would be ukraine and kiev but it comes with its own set of risks so does uh, colombia but still 6.2 is, is a really good deal especially when you take a step back and you look at the macro situation of the city of medellin it's a city of 2.5 million people that is doing well it's attracting a lot of foreign investment alibaba invested here mercado libre which is the amazon of south america has an innovation center here medin international airport is a fast growing base for a hub for viva air they have 14 flights a week to miami a bunch of flights to orlando other airlines fly directly to uh, to new york and there there are going to be more connections to mexico to Argentina to Brazil to Chile so really the airport is is booming so when you take a step back and you see that you can buy in one of the best neighborhoods in this city for a bit over a thousand dollars a square meter and still get very decent yields of 6.2 percent using conservative figures we use conservative figures from the purchase price to the to all of the assumptions in the numbers Honestly, it's very attractive. So sure, it's not the prettiest thing inside. It's a modest house. There are a lot of very nice apartments. Um, tomorrow, you're gonna show me an apartment with amazing views. Yeah, in Poblado. In Poblado, High and that one is going for about $1,500 a square meter. So yeah, if you wanna live there, it's definitely nicer. You also get decent yields. But what I wanted to show here with this video is that with not much money with just a hundred K you can get yourself a little house with three bedrooms in a good area and very decent yields and we didn't even explore Airbnb because uh, we were having that discussion offline yeah. 
essentially doing Airbnb in Colombia is very complicated because to be able to do Airbnb, you need to have the approval of 70% of your homeowners association, which essentially never happens. So you can only do Airbnb in buildings that were designed for Airbnb, so that typically come at a large premium. You have to pay more because it's, yeah. It's, nice. it's a lot more. Yeah. Or you do Airbnb from a little house like this because you're essentially allowed to. Um, so looking at the own Airbnb I'm staying in, I personally don't like to spend a lot of money when I travel. I just need a, a bed, uh, fast internet, and a place that's you know decent. I'm paying for a, a little one-bedroom apartment, $40 a night. So this here, a three-bedroom apartment, which is like objectively nicer than the place I'm staying in once it's like nicely furnished, it'll easily go for $50, 50 a night, $60 a night. And again, if we use conservative assumptions of 60 to 70 percent occupancy you can take that 6.2 percent yield and easily add two three percentage points to it yeah very interesting we're going to go check out some other investments that you highlighted and yeah. some other videos that we'll do together and also an apartment like this entitles you to residency here in colombia so there are two types of residencies one is Kind of the cheap residency you need to invest about 90 80, 80 90k yeah 80 yeah. 90 thousand dollars and this gives you residency and you must stay in colombia at least half of the year to be able to renew it yeah but this makes you a tax resident which you don't necessarily also want one to three years are you getting it one and to after three years. three years you need to reply again okay yeah. reapply the interesting residency is when you invest at least hundred fifty thousand dollars and then you get a residency permit for five years five years and you just need to show up for a day every two years just <laughs> to maintain it if you're interested in making a real estate investment in Medellin, i really recommend that you speak to mauricio and his team uh, he's got a whole bunch of people working on his yeah. team his partner is is from canada as well um, and you can find investments you can find lifestyle properties and we were discussing a lot of people seem to be coming here and doing a bit of both. So they buy a, an apartment that is that they stay in for a few weeks every year or a few months, and then the rest of the time they rent it out. Yeah, sure. because the weather here in Medellin is it's called like the eternal uh, city of spring. So the weather here is almost always, like you can see now, it depends a little bit more raining and so. So it's a lot of people who's like from Sweden, so like or like where it's cold. Do you have a lot of Swedes investing here as well? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. so, and that's very fun for me because I'm like, I take Swedes here and they get to know it. They have like the local feeling. I obviously know the city well, so I can show them to have a good time and good. where to make good investments and what to think about and cool. yeah. So that's, that's and an in Swedish, of course. <laughs> that's an interesting niche. So if you're Swedish and you want service yeah, in Swedish, yeah. you can get in touch with Mauricio. Yeah, for sure. There is his email right below. There is also a link with more details on his services. Yeah. Cool. So before we go, I throughout the video, I was trying to think of a shirt joke because of your shirt, but I, I don't know. I couldn't think of one, so I'll just point out a shirt. It's too like, good looking to make a <laughs> joke about, but yeah, it's... It's comfortable and nice. <laughs> nice to Thank see you. you. Thank yeah, you, Marisa. <laughs>